This week on Maker Update, a servo word clock, the 2019 Hackaday Prize, a phone that only plays hold music, organizing parts with Google Assistant, cheap robotics, and punching holes. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome to Maker Update, my first ever episode of Maker Update for the DigiKey YouTube channel. Uh, if you're new to the show, basically every week I round up cool new projects I think you'll be into, and I include links for them down in the video description. To show you what I mean, let's get started with the project of the week. Check out this servo-controlled word clock by Mos Ivers on Instructables. You may have seen clocks like this before that spell out the time, but I guarantee you've never seen one like this. Inside the enclosure here are 114 servos that move 3D printed letters in and out of focus. Each letter is backlit by its own addressable LED that helps each word stand out even more by changing its color. But don't let the minimal look fool you. It took 798 individual 3D printed pieces to make this, attached together with over 600 screws and around 500 individually soldered wires. The brains of the whole project is an Arduino Nano connected to a real-time clock module. All the code you need to calibrate the servos and run the clock is included. In fact, this incredibly thorough guide covers everything from the 3D printing, laser cutting, wiring, and frame construction, there's even a Fusion 360 file that you can pull apart and have fun with. It's an incredible project and a very unique clock. Some news to share this week. The 2019 Hackaday Prize is now underway and DigiKey is one of the sponsors. This is an annual competition to encourage engineers, makers, hackers, artists, and hobbyists to really focus on collaborating around a project that they propose. Often there's a theme or a number of themes. This year's theme is to get beyond the prototype and create a product that could actually be manufactured. The grand prize, which will be decided in November, will win $125,000 and a design residency at Supply Frame. But along the way, there are a number of $10,000 prizes attached to themes of concept, design, production, benchmark, and communication. So if you've been sitting on a cool idea, this is a great excuse to give it a try. Speaking of great ideas, let's run through some more projects. Fuzzy Wobble has a great one showing off how he turned an old landline phone into a jukebox of the world's worst hold music. He calls it the greatest holdies, and to make it work, he's using an Arduino Mega and the Adafruit Music Maker Shield, which stores all the music on a micro SD card and works with a bunch of audio formats. If you've ever looked at an old phone and thought about hacking it, this is a great place to start. Also, check out his older guide on hacking a full-size payphone into a jukebox for 90s music. Okay, Google, insert three red motor drivers into a big box. Okay, locating space for three red motor drivers into a big box. You also have to see how Dustin Dobransky made a voice-controlled parts bin assistant he calls the FindyBot 3000. With it, you can ask your Google Home to tell you which bin has your LEDs or your breadboards and it will light up the bins that match your request. But you can also search by tags, like things that are red, or tools, or IoT, whatever you define in the database that you set up ahead of time. For the hardware, Dustin is using a particle photon board programmed with Arduino and addressable LED strip. The software is really the intense part of this, which bounces from Google Assistant, to If This Then That, to Microsoft Azure, which looks at an SQL database that you'll need to build that lists and tags all your components and their locations. It's way more than I'm capable of doing on many levels, but it's cool to know that it's possible and it may be a useful way to go for anyone dealing with large critical organization problems. For something more my speed, check out this solenoid driven steam engine on Thingiverse by The Mechanic. Not really a steam engine since it's all electrical, but it looks just as satisfying and much less likely to blow up in your face. The project is mostly made from 3D printed parts and a handful of small nuts and bolts You'll need to get a small ball bearing, a magnet, and a limit switch. What I think is kind of cool is that you have to wind your own coil to build the solenoid. The end result is a pretty cool desk toy, or even something you can give as a gift. Another gift-worthy geek sculpture is this freeform solar circuit design by Mohit Boite. If you've never seen any of Mohit's brass rod circuits before, be sure to check the link in the description. For this satellite-inspired design, Mohit is using a type of beam robotic circuit called a pummer, it absorbs light during the day and then pulses LED light at nighttime. To learn more about Pummers, I've got a link in the show notes to an old Make Magazine article by Gareth Branwin that inspired this particular circuit. You also need to check out this robot arm that Electron Dust was able to make using $3 stepper motors 
and an ESP32 project board programmed with Arduino. Aside from being an inexpensive robot arm, there are two noteworthy angles on this project. One is that by using the faster processor on the ESP32 board, he was able to create a stepper motor driver library that uses ultra smooth sine wave velocity curves. I'm not smart enough to explain how it works, but you can see just by looking at the way it locks in and out of position that it's unusually smooth for a robot made out of scrap wood. The second cool tip from this is that you can modify these cheap stepper motors by cutting a trace on the built-in driver board and instead connecting them up to an equally cheap A4988 stepper driver. The payoff is better torque and precision out of a motor that costs less than a sandwich. Finally, a project that demonstrates what a difference an enclosure can make. To update the look of an old portable cassette deck, Igor Afanasyev designed this 3D printed enclosure that puts the playback mechanism front and center. The dials and switches also got an update with salvage components that fit the Dieter Rams retro aesthetic of the new design. Aside from a few new LEDs he wired in for a cool look, the cassette player itself is essentially unchanged. I think it's a cool idea and for better or for worse, a new excuse for me to hoard thrift store electronics. We're almost done here, but I have a few extra tips to share. First, through Gareth Bramwin on Boing Boing, I learned about the Polygonia.design web app. You can create a free account that lets you make intricate patterns that you can download as an SVG or DXF file and drop into your laser cutter or 3D printer. If you're making a project enclosure and you want a little extra fancy touch, this is one way to go. On Thingiverse, I came across this quick print that lets you turn a rubber band into a bongo tie. These are great for tying up cables or extension cords. I also found this little 3D printed knob that fits right into an M3 hex screw. What's cool about this is that the design is parametric, so you can use the Thingiverse customizer tool to adjust the knob and socket and knurled edge to fit just what you need. Over on the Tested channel, Sean has a great video showing a range of tools used for punching holes. From a leather punch to precision metal punches is a seven minute crash course on a lot of options out there worth knowing about. Finally, I like to do a little product spotlight at the end. This week, inspired by the servo controlled word clock, I thought we'd take a look at the same SG90 micro servo used to move those letters in and out of focus. These are available on DigiKey for under $5 and you can get them in two flavors. The standard option is what's called a positional rotation servo that's limited to 180 degrees of movement. That's what's used on the word clock. What I didn't know is that you can also get the same servo in a continuous rotation option. This means that you can continuously rotate in either direction. The downside is that you can't recall these back to a home position, so they'd be no good for something like the word clock. But what's cool is that you can use these like little geared motors for slowly moving things around. They're great for little robots, and because of the design, there's all kinds of interesting attachments that you can stick on these. You can find DigiKey links for both options down in the description. All right, and that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, and because this is my first episode on the DigiKey YouTube channel, every thumbs up and positive comment that you can leave is super appreciated. I also encourage you to get on the Maker Update email list that goes out every week with show notes and a few bonus projects thrown in. And if this is your first Maker Update, I'll also include a link to a playlist of all the old episodes so you can chip away at that, all right? A huge thanks to my patrons on Patreon, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.